Hi there, and thanks for checking out this video. So Japanese stab stitch, or stab binding, is a traditional Japanese technique called Yotsumi Toji. Hopefully I said that right, um, but that roughly means four holes. And this is because there are four holes to the left side of your paper block used to stitch everything together. This is something I learned a few years ago in art college and use it a lot to hold pieces of work together or make a sketchbook. Personally, I prefer to use this technique to make a book from artwork I've already made or as a scrapbook to stick things into because it can be quite difficult to work directly into as the spine is so large it means you can't open it completely flat. And these are some books I've made in the past and these are some lino prints and this one's a photo album. This one's quite cool as it has different materials like paper, thicker card and even some fabric in there. It's great because it's really simple, there's no gluing involved, the stitching can be quite decorative and you can try out different materials and different colours and just make it look all pretty. So to start with you need some paper. I'm making this one with some watercolours I've done recently. All the edges are torn so it's not going to be a super neat one but all of my pages are the same size. They can be different sizes, but it's just a bit easier if you keep everything pretty much the same. Obviously, I could have trimmed the edges neatly, but I was kind of going for a rustic vibe on this one. Next, I need to mark out where my four holes are going. I've made this little cover page, and I'm going to mark it up with an even space between each hole along the left edge. So I'm going two centimetres in from the edge, and then every two centimetres along that. You can make the distance from the edge whatever you want, uh, but the closer it is to the edge, the more careful you have to be to make sure you don't tear your paper. There are lots of different ways you can make your holes, but because this paper is quite thick, I'm going to be using a punch. You can use an awl, but if you don't have any book binding tools, you could use something like a drawing pin or even the point of a compass. But the holes need to be quite big, as whatever you sew with needs to pass through each hole at least three times. So now my cover page is all done, I'm going to use it as a guide to punch out the rest of the pages. Okay, so once all your holes are punched, you need to put all your pages together. I'm just using a darning needle to make sure all the holes are lined up. And then I'm going to clip them together and just use a piece of scrap paper to protect the pages from being marked by the clip. Okay, then you need to choose your binding material. The usual thing you would use would be a waxed thread, but I think for this type of binding it can be really fun to try different things. I often use ribbon or coloured cord, um, you can try twine or raffia, just experiment and see what works. This time I'm trying out this blue hemp cord. And the general rule is that your binding material needs to be four to five times longer than your spine. I tend to err on the side of caution and go a little bit longer, as it's better to have too much than not enough. I'm using a darning needle as I need a larger eye to fit my binding material through. I think there is more than one way to do this, but this is how I learned it. So first of all, you go up through the second hole and you leave a small tail at the back and just hold it down with a finger. Then you go down through the first hole. Then you go down through the first hole again, making sure that your binding material is going around the top of your book. And then you go down through your top hole again, but this time making sure your binding material is going around the spine of your book. And then you go up through the second hole again, around the spine and up through that same hole again. Then you go down through the third hole, around the spine, and down through that same hole again. Then you go up through the bottom hole, around the bottom, 
and up through that same hole again. Around the spine and up through the bottom hole again. Down through the third hole. And then flip your book over and you should have a gap in which you can tie your two tails together. And then just trim off the excess. Or if you want to make it more decorative, you could make it into a bow. And there you have it. Your book is nicely stitched together. And then you can just go through and gently bend your pages against the spine, just so that your book opens nicely. So there you have it. Really simple, really fun to do. You can also make a hardcover for this type of binding, but it's a lot more time consuming, so maybe I'll make a separate video for that one. I'm just gonna make one more with a slight variation on the last one. It's basically the same, but with two extra holes to make the stitching more decorative. I've marked four holes evenly spaced again, and my two extra holes are in the center of the top and bottom square. The holes are slightly bigger this time, as I'm gonna try a thicker binding material. This time I'm trying out this raffia in a nice contrasting colour. I don't know how well it will work, but we will see. So it starts off the same as the last one. You go up through the second hole hold on to that tail at the back. Then you go down through the top hole. Around the top and back down the top hole again. Around the spine and down the top hole again. Then here's the slight difference. You're going to go up through the centre hole in the top square, around the top and back up that hole again, then around the spine and back up that hole again, and then back down to our first hole to create the diagonal line. Then you carry on as you did previously, going up through the second hole around the spine and up through the second hole again, down through the third hole, around the spine and down through the third hole again, up through the fourth hole, around the bottom and up through that hole again, around the spine and up through that hole again, then down through that hole in the centre of the square, around the bottom, down through that hole again, around the spine and down through the same hole, back up through your fourth hole, down through the third hole, and then flip it over and tie your two ends together. And there you go. I do think the raffia worked quite well. I'm just going to make a little front cover for this one and that will be ready to use. <laughs> 